All right. Good evening. I'm Reverend Steve Clegg. I'm the interim pastor at Second Baptist Church in St. Paul's, and this is our midweek Bible study. And we are in the book of Joel. So if you want to be turning to the, to the book of Joel, go ahead and be turning there. We're going to get out into chapter 2 this evening. This is part 2 of the series as we're working on. And so we'll be getting into that. But I want to get into the announcements first, um, just so we can get through these. Um, Sunday school, 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Um, faithful workers class in the sanctuary, everybody else in their classrooms. Then we do service at 10. Um, we're going to continue to give the option if you want to stay outside in the parking lot um, and do the transmission, that's fine. That's on FM 87.9. Um, if you, if you want to come inside, that's fine. We ask that when you come in, you wear a mask. Um, once you get to your seat, you can remove the mask if you're fully vaccinated. And then we also ask that you do that same way with your classrooms going to Sunday school. Um, if you're not thinking the virus is real, uh, we were supposed to have some gentlemen come down from Greensboro tomorrow and one of the meeting, meetings with one of the gentlemen was canceled. Um, he, he contacted both um, COVID and even though there are practicing protocols at, you know, at the Greensboro office and whatnot, he got COVID and so we'll be unable to make it. Not sure if anybody else is coming now that's been exposed in that office, but like I say, it's still being transmitted. It's still going around. So we're going to continue to practice. We have a lot of people who have um, weak immune systems or have other health issues that if they got COVID would be very dangerous. So we're just being careful for each other. Um, there is an announcement in the bulletin, Brotherhood and WMU will meet tonight. That, obviously, that is not happening. Um, that was a misunderstanding. Um, that will probably not happen until probably in the fall. Um, month of May, we're collecting small toys and games for the Christmas shoe boxes. The boxes in the hallway, remember, no liquids of any kind, even in the games and toys. So, you know, if you get one of those shake 'em up things that's got liquid in it, can't can't use it. Um, so, like I say, there's different games that have you know liquids in them. Just make sure we're not use, collecting any of those. No liquids. Um, also, in month of May, we're collecting the Mother's Day offering, and the envelopes are in the handouts or on the altar. Uh, they look like this. Um, there's a little pamphlet um, giving thanks and then the envelope for it. And we'll be doing that through May 29th. The goal this year is 1500. Um, so we ask that you do your part if, if you're able. And then also remember the food pantry sponsored by the Methodist Church um, as we continue to support that ministry. Um, no birthdays or anniversaries this week. So let's get into our prayer request. Um, driving in tonight, like I say, um, I was behind the storms. There were some storms that came through this area, but an alert went up. On up north, um, up towards Turkey and all, they're expecting some really bad weather, um, some bad hail, um, damaging hail to cars and homes, um, high winds up into the 60 miles per hour range that can bring down limbs and trees. So we're praying that that area is safe. Um, so just keep them in your prayers. We Like I say, we need the rain, but we don't need people getting hurt. So like I say, just continue to pray. Obviously something out on 95, traffic was detouring into St. Paul's as I came in this evening. Um, southbound lane was basically to a crawl or a stop. So something happened obviously out on 95, so we pray for that situation to be all right as well. Um, in our prayer request, um, also Marianne Edwards, Ronnie Locklear, Donna and Jordan Floyd, Louise McLean, Mike and Teresa Ivey, Charlene Hammonds, Daniel Smith, Kenny Jackson, Pearl Jackson, Angie Baxley, Gina White, Carol Powers, Tom Marie Taylor, Jada Clayton, Ashley Baxley, Kim Hewitt, Richard Holbrook, Karen Clegg. Karen's continuing with her IV treatments. They are giving her some trouble as far as her stomach periodically um, and headaches. Um, so she goes back to Dr. Thursday. We're hoping maybe made some progress and maybe, you know, and be able to change them up or reduce the frequency. But we're continuing through with that. Um, David Warren, Matthew Ward, Kathy Beanie, um, Michael Davis, Beth Ward, Mac McMorrow, Joe Pate, Van Garganis, Diane Townsend. Um, Miss Diane's having a rough time. Um, I'm in the hospital, I believe. I don't think she's gotten home yet. Eugene Florian Eford, Shannon Britt, Chloe Akers, Junior and Janet House. Both of those are fighting cancer. Um, so, and Janet's going through some really high radiation treatments, as I understand. And it makes it hard for her to deal with a lot of issues and people have to kind of stay back from her. So, really pray for that um, family there. Tamara Overby, Billy McKenzie, Dan Beard, Mary Beard um, got a report back. They going to have a consultation between several doctors with Mary. Um, they believe they can do something for Mary with her cancer in her eye. Um, don't know any details. Just be praying over that situation that God will just 
take over that situation and take care of Mary's eye. Um, Amanda Kane, Linda and Tonelli Sunk, Frisch Family, Daryl Britt, Nash White, Lisa Ray Rodriguez, Bobby Pate, Patsy Butler, Wanda Carter, Kyle Edwards, Supreme Court leaking out. They say this is a leak. I, I wonder if it's just politics, but there is a chance the Supreme Court may come through with a decision to reverse Roe versus Wade. There's also a discussion that it may become federal law and not be a state option. So be praying that we can get rid of the sin in this nation. Let's just face it. That is a sin against this nation. We need to get rid of abortion. Um, Ronnie King, William Scott, Deborah Holbrook, Dan Hurley, Taylor Fields, Ashley Banks, Kenny Strickland, Freddie McBroom. Um, Freddie McBroom is making good progress, healing well, um, getting up, trying to do some different things. So continue um, pray, give him praise on his recovery as it progresses. Lee Stevens, Jimmy Britt, Cynthia Kinlock, Kinlock McMorrow, excuse me, I'm reading on the wrong line. Cynthia McMorrow, Wayne McLean, um, the pulpit committee, our church, the lost, our nation, its leaders, troops and their families, and the police officers and the pastors and their families. Um, remember Lee Stevens, um, he had a procedure um, this week and then Bonnie is at home that's Jennifer's mother very weak um, so praying for her um, remember Susan Warren um, Cameron Starling um, praying there um, also the fires in New Mexico that continues uh, Mabel um, gave praise some prayer requests were answered Angie's ear is doing better so praise report um, the family of Dr. Campbell who passed um, David Warren had some skin spots and different things um, they went in and so praying that good test results come back from there. Um, Kathy Beanie had a tough doctor's appointment, but um, it's having faith. So, like I say, she was hoping to be a candidate for a procedure that was not going to be the option. Um, but, like I say, she's still having faith and just continue praying for her. AJ Lasseter continuing, even though they thought he was going to pass. Um, like I say, we talked about Mary Beard. Um, Ashley Blanks is waiting on a liver. Um, Ronnie Locklear has a tumor. Um, it's in, in his skull, so like I say, remember that. Remember also the family of Donna Gonzalez, um, who passed, so remember that. And also, this evening, I um, got a prayer request um, in from friends of ours, JD and Lynn West. Remember, many of you probably remember JD, who used to work at Piggly Wiggly, um, having some health issues, both of them. Um, so, just they're just needing prayer and strength as they're going through this, so pray for them as well. Um, I say different things going on um, across the nation. Uh, I, I gave you a lot of details on the drought um, out west. That continues to be a big issue. One of the discoveries today, now they're starting to find things. It's these lake levels are getting so low. Um, today, I think it was today or this weekend, um, a news article came out across the day. They did find a body in the bottom of one of those reservoirs. Now that the water seed, it was stuffed inside a barrel. And they're saying that it's probably been there 40 years. And police are saying there's probably a lot of other things that are going to come up if these lakes continue and reservoirs continue to drop. As over the years, people have hidden crimes and objects of crimes into it. So just be praying for that whole situation out west. I also continue to pray for the situation in Ukraine. Um, just different things going on there. Um, what can we say? There's just a lot going on, and we just need to be in prayer about it. So, I know there's a lot of private and personal requests, as we indicated Sunday, by political hands and both services. Um, so, we continue to pray for those as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and just give you the glory. And Father, we just praise you and thank you for all your blessings. And Father, we thank you for the rain, um, much needed, that we received today. And Father, we know that you're in control. and Father, we just ask you to protect those as the storms move on up and ask that they'll be safe and protected from damage and hurt from the storms. But we'll receive the benefit of the rains. And Father, we just pray for the rains out west. They need a lot of rain out west, Lord. So millions of people are being affected by this mega drought. And Father, if it continues, we know that's going to escalate much higher. And Father, only you can bring the rains. And Father, we just ask that you will just bless them with rains. And begin to refill these reservoirs and father we just pray that you'll bring peace in the ukraine father the war that goes on there and there's other wars in the world Lord, but this is the one that we see and it just seems like it just continues day after day to be more gruesome and continues to escalate father we just pray for peace 
for that country and for those people and those things to be resolved. And Father, we pray for our, those on our prayer list. Father, we have a couple on our prayer list, people who have lost family members and friends. And Father, we just pray for comfort during their time of grief. Bless them, Lord, and keep them. And Father, we have others who are shut-ins, and Father, they need your strength and need your company, Lord. Sometimes it's easy to you know, feel alone, and Father, they just need to feel your presence and just bless them, Lord, letting them know that you're there. And Father, we just ask that they'll be strengthened that maybe they can return back to us in service one day. And Father, you know the, the outcome of those things. We pray your will be done in those situations. And Father, we ask for healing as we have many on the prayer list that have cancer and battling cancer. Some are awaiting test results. Others are waiting, you know, is there a plan of treatment? There's just so many things going on for so many people, Lord. And Father, you already know it. You already know the outcome of each and every situation. You also know what the, they're going to endure and go through for the healing. And Father, we just pray for outright healing for them. If that be thy will, but we also know that if, however you bring healing, Father, we just pray that you'll bless them and give them the strength to endure all that they will. And Father, we just pray also for the others on our prayer list that are battling other issues and other things. And Father, we just pray for their strength and their healing. And Father, we also know that in the private request, there's probably concerns with family. There's concerns with those who are in need of salvation, as some have indicated um, verbally. Father, we also know that you know people have to make decisions, and decisions aren't easy sometimes. And we pray for wisdom for them. And Father, we just ask you to just guide each and every one of these situations, direct them. And Father, use us to pick up and help each other, to edify one another, and to do the things that we should as Christians. And Father, may we be good ambassadors for you, and may we reach out. Father, it's not about reaching into the church, but it's reaching out to those outside the church helping them to find Jesus. And Father, may we be lighthouses and may we be the salt of the earth and do the things that we're called to do. Father, move us. Do not let us be sedentary, but let us be in motion. And let us be your hands and feet in all things that we will be called your disciples. And that people will know us by our love, not because we say we love them, but because of the things that we do out of love. As we're obedient to you, Lord, and as we're doing it out of love, not a fear of wrath or grief or any other repercussions, but purely follow your will and do thy things according to your will out of love. Bless this Bible study and be with us this evening, Lord. God, and direct us through all these things. For it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to get into our Bible study. We're going to pick up um, chapter 2 of Joel. Uh, we're going to get into the first 11 verses right off the bat when we get into it. And like I say, this section deals with what is referred to, remember we are talking about Joel, was talking about the day of the Lord. And excuse me, allergies, I started sneezing on the way home from work today. Don't know if this is a change of weather, as I was driving towards a storm or what, but like I say, it's going to be all right. Um, but remember, Joel was talking about the day of the Lord, and it, it talks about different versions of it. Tonight he's talking about the imminent day of the Lord. Um what is happening and now he's telling the people to quit looking at the locusts and all the problems you have with the locusts remember we talked about locusts last time the army some that came in and every you know one band after another eating everything and now he's saying hey that those locusts represented an army that was coming and it's preparing to invade and that army's going to come out of the north and it's mostly referring to um the invasion of the assyrian army that's who they believe this is all referring to um, that happened during the reign of King Hezekiah. It took place around 701 B.C. And that's what was part of our discussion back in our Bible study in Isaiah in chapters 36 and 37. So from that we should recall that God allowed the Assyrians to come into Israel and invade. And bring great destruction um, upon the land. But he would not let them go into Jerusalem. Um, Jerusalem was spared from this. Um, but they did come across Judah. Now. In this chapter, Joel gives the people three timely instructions. And we really need to think about these in a modern age or the day um, concerning this because, you know, we're under attack. The arm, you know, our enemy is upon us. So the first instruction, blow the trumpet. I don't think a lot of people realize how much the enemy is upon us. 
They don't realize that we're in a daily war with Satan and his demons. Now, we're under a war with forces that we cannot see, with principalities that we cannot see. And we are in a spiritual war, but we fail to recognize it. So we don't put on our armor and we're easily attacked and overcome. And also, let's listen to that as the first section, first instruction is going to be blow the trumpet. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, they have not been ever like, neither shall any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and is behind it a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run, like the noise of chariots on tops of mountains. They shall leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the wall, and they shall climb up upon the houses, and they shall enter into the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, and the sun and moon shall turn dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for the camp is very great, for he is strong and executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Very strong words of, here comes the, here comes the enemy. They are coming, and you better sound the trumpet. There ain't time to waste. We got to get ready. The war on locusts now has turned into a real war. That is what Joel was telling them. He said, blow the trumpets and warn the people. It's going to get bad. Now remember, the trumpets were used to call assemblies, announce special events, mark religious, and warn people of war. And that's exactly what's happening here. They're blowing the trumpets to announce a war to call a fast. Their weapons against the invading enemy would be Repentance and prayer. Let the Lord would fight for them. That's what they're seeking. Let God fight for them. Twice in this passage, Joel tells us that the invasion is the day of the Lord. Meaning a very special period that God had planned and would direct. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. It was God who brought the locusts to the land. And it will be God who allows the Assyrians to invade the land. God is using the enemy to punish his people, to bring repentance, to bring remorse, to bring them to him. He would permit this army to ravage Judah, just as the locusts and not only Assyrians would also abuse and kill the people. And it says, Woe to Assyria, my rod and my anger and a staff in whose hand is my indignation. I will send him against an ungodly nation to seize the spoil and to take a prey and to tread down like the mire of the streets. That's over in Isaiah. It is a vivid account of an invading army. This is just an amazing sight. If you really try to picture this invading army, they're coming. And, you know, it talks about them coming in the ranks. They're not just loafing along in this big group. Of people. No, they are coming in a formation of fight. And, you know, when you come in that type of formation, you are to fight in that rain right in front of you. The guy beside you is going to take care of their descent. And they're coming, and they're going to, whatever's in front of them, they're going to lay waste. It says it's like the Garden of Eden in front of them, and there's like desolate desert behind them, a wilderness. Nothing will be left. They'll be trampled underfoot. They are going to destroy Judah. It says they're going to come like great hordes. And again, he gives us the image. Remember, the locusts were it's symbolic of what was coming. I mean, this time, you know, this army would have a scorch the earth policy where they the locusts ate everything. They're going to scorch it. They're going to devastate the towns. They're going to destroy it and bring destruction. And so, you know, 
you go back into image and sometimes you'll see in Isaiah in different places where they describe the locusts almost like miniature horses but only here the Assyrians will be real horses people riding upon horses as horsemen and what makes it clear is that the Lord will be in charge of this invasion this is his army fulfilling his word that's what verse 2 and 11 chapter 2 11 is talking about God is going to use this heathen nation to accomplish his purpose and then it talks about this awesome cosmic disturbance in Joel 2 10 the way of announcing that the Lord is in charge that's what these signs are talking about this is God doing this God can use the righteous and the unrighteous and sometimes we forget that and God can use the unrighteous to punish the righteous when they're not being righteous maybe that's kind of a weird way of saying that but here's what he's saying he is going to use the Assyrians to punish the people his chosen people because they have fallen away from him they have turned to other gods they have turned to other things they're not trusting in God anymore they're trusting in their wealth and in the you know the world so Joel continues verses 12 through 17 the second instruction rend your hearts therefore also now saith the Lord turn ye even to me with all your heart and with all fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and great and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God blow the trumpet in Zion sanctify a fast call a solemn assembly gather the people sanctify the congregation assemble the elders gather the children and those that suck the breath let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people O Lord and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them wherefore should they say among people where is their God once again Joel was calling for this assembly we struggle with this. We, we really struggle with this today as Christians. We don't know what it is to call an assembly, to call to a fast. And all. We are missing it. And it's not necessarily we have to do everybody. Maybe sometimes we need to call ourselves to a fast. Call ourselves to an assembly of repentance. Joel is giving them a prayer. And it's, there's so much that's in this. But he's calling the assembly of God's people would repent of their sins and seek the Lord's help. The nation didn't know when the evasion would occur. And so the important thing was to turn to God now. Turn to him now. Maybe he'll change his mind. Maybe he'll lessen it. Maybe he'll you know, turn it back. That's what, If he'll repent of it. That's what it's talking about. But in order for this to happen, they have to be sincere. Sincerity. Remember, we talked about that word, right? Sin and sear, without wax. You know, no wax, you know, and not fakes, not covered over, not made to look better than what it is. No, we're talking about a sincere heart here, a sincere repentance. You know, you can participate in a religious ceremony. You can sing the songs and pray the prayers and, and let everybody around you think, oh, boy, they're just, you know, they're into that service. And it can be fake as, you know, you know, it's three dollar bill. I almost said two, but I have several of those. You know, it, it can be fake. People fake their religion. The sincerity only shows when they do what is God's will. And so, part of the Jewish, when there's this great turmoil, when there's this great repentance needed, this great sin, they would rent their garments. They would tear their garments out of. You know, this painstaking, you know, pray, God, look at us. We're, you know, humbling. It was a humbling act. It was, you know, but the problem of it is people learn to do it and not mean a thing. It just became tearing cloth. And he said, don't tear your clothes. Tear your heart. Rent your heart. Tear it in your heart. Break that hardened heart. Break that sinful heart. Open repent 
turn back to God. That's what he's talking. He says, humbly confess your sins and bring God a repentant heart. Matthew 15, 8, 9 says, The people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me. Their lips with their heart is far from me. This is so common. This is Jesus talking about. You know, people go to God and say, Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. But it's fake. Their mouth is saying words that has nothing to do with their heart. And that's what is happening here. Israel's heart is drifted from God. Our heart today in so many churches and so many Christians who call people who call themselves their heart is so far from God because they're so engulfed in the world. But then we go on and read, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. Wow. How many churches have turned away from God's word in so many ways and they're doing things that are worldly? They're not preaching the truth. They're preaching what the people want to hear. They're tickling the ears, the clinging, the clanging symbols as we used to call it. They're preaching so that they can get people to come into the church and they come into the church and they're making them feel good, but they're not telling them the whole truth. They're appeasing them. But the psalmist says this, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. When we break down, when we pour out ourselves to God, then he will receive us. But in our arrogance, if we simply say, Lord, forgive us, and we stand up there proud like, I really didn't do anything wrong. My sins aren't that great. People do worse. So why am I be, supposed to be asking for forgiveness? Well, they're not going to get forgiven. Because you're not sincere about it. To me, Christians don't take their sins serious. To me, Christians don't realize what bondage they're in because they've been in it so long. The one thing that encourages us to repent and return to the Lord is the character of God. Knowing that he is gracious and compassionate. We so often talk about God's wrath and the things that he brings upon the enemy and those that go against him. But understand that he is slow to anger and abounding in love. That ought to motivate us to seek his face. This description of attribute of God goes back to Moses. Remember meeting God on Mount Sinai. Man, Moses went up to Mount Sinai. And when he interceded for the nation of Israel, he said, Lord, turn back from this. You know, you can go back and read in Exodus 34, 6, and 7. But basically what it's saying is such a gracious God would turn and have pity. Note Joel's concern was that the people would once again have offerings to bring to the Lord, not just food on the tables. Too often we want what we need, but we forget what we're supposed to be giving to God. So we pray for our needs, but not the means to worship and to bless God. Think about that one for a little while. Lord, I have these needs. Lord, I have needs. In these needs, is God a part of them? Are you making sure that you can worship God, that you can bless God, that you can praise God when he meets these needs? Or what you have just to fill your need and you're not even thinking about it? But Joel and this he's saying, all the people assemble. Now there are certain things that it gets really interesting when you go back through this list. Elders and children. Children under, under a certain age are never called into fasting. As a rule, they figured too young to understand, so they wouldn't bring it. No, he says, nursing babes, he says, that's what the ones that are sucking on their breasts. They're saying, bring them too. Don't leave them home. Don't leave the nursing mother at home, and I'll bring them all. We all got to turn back. It says, even the newlyweds. Now, the newlyweds in Jewish custom were not supposed to be disturbed during the first year of marriage. They were excused from war, they're excused from everything. And he says, disturb them. They got to be here. We got to have everybody. No one's going to be left out from the youngest to the oldest. And then Joel gives them the prayer to use that presents two reasons why God should deliver them. 
He says, one, Israel covenant privileges as God's heritage. He says, we're God's people. Deliver us, Lord. We're yours. And all. We're our, your, part of your heritage. And then the other thing is that the glory of God's name before other nations. Similar, just what did Moses pray about? Lord, turn back. Don't make these an embarrassment that you brought your people out in the desert to kill them. Don't embarrass yourself, Lord. Glorify yourself. Lord, if you abandon them now, the other nations will mock and say, where was their God? The Jews are indeed God's special treasure and heritage, and it's still today. Think about what God has done through Israel. He's given them the laws. He's given them the covenants, the temple, the priesthood, a special land, and a promise that they would bless the whole world. From Israel, the word of God came, and also the gift of our Savior. They are God's special people, and he's not done with them. Israel was called to bear witness to other nations. They have not done that well when it comes to God. And so at this time, we are in the age of the church. And who is calling people to God? The, age? the church is. But that one day, the church is going to be removed. How can God be glorified if his, his people are destroyed? That's what Joel was putting there. He says, they're going to mock you, Lord. They're going to say, where is their God? Israel, the people of God's people, had a choice. They had to choose between revival, getting right with God, or reproach, robbing God of the glory. How much do we need to make this decision today? For it is an invading army that seeks to destroy our nation. It is not an invading army that seeks to destroy a nation, although people were talking about Russia. But the invasion of the world into the church. And its members. For when will we, the church, choose revival, getting right with God, over reproach, robbing God of the glory, and holding on to our personal comforts? We, the church, have to make that decision. Each and every member in is the body working together. The third instruction, as we move towards the end of this, right? The third instruction believe his promises. That's what's going to be here. And these are in verses 18 through 27. This should also ring a bell and be an instruction to believers today. So listen to this. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among heathen. But I will remove far from you the northern army. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face towards the east sea, and a hinder part towards the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up, and his ill savour shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do these do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and will cause to come down to you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore you to the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now Joel looks beyond the invasion here. That's what he's doing. Beyond the invasion to the time when God would heal his land and restore his blessings to his people. Just as he blew the locust into the depths of the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, the Eastern and Western Seas, so he could drive the invading army out of the land. And one night, God killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. Remember that. That great slaying in the middle of the night and Sennacherib went home a defeated king. That's in Isaiah 37, 36 through 38. But the corpses must create a great stench before they were buried. Think about it. They didn't take their dead with them. They didn't bury them before they left. 
out of this. Um, some Bible scholars believe that Psalms 126 grew out of this event, for it describes a sudden surprising deliverance that startled the nations. Judah's return from Babylon con contivity was neither sudden nor surprising, so it wasn't that, right? The Lord had done a great thing, where we, whereas, and that's what is echoed here in Joel. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Both Joel in chapter 2 and Psalms 126 describe the re restoration of a ravaged earth. And all, the return of the harvest that fulfilled what Isaiah promised to King Hezekiah. All this is coming together, right? Now, one of the things we don't always understand, but you have to understand terminology, right? The former rain is not rains you used to get. No, the former rains are what referred to March and April rains. The latter rains are referred to as the October, November rains. They're an agrarian culture, so they need to have periods of rain to, you know, for the crops, and they have to have a dry period in order to harvest crop and replant and get into the next one. And um, one of the times, and we've seen it repeatedly in the Old Testament, God would shut off the rains when his people went against him, when they were disobedient, and they would not have the rains for their crops. But God had promised, here's what he's promising, a bumper crops that would more than make up for the dregs, the plagues and the droughts and all these things. I will repay you for the years of locusts have eaten, as was says in verse 25, is a promise to all that would return to the Lord with a sincere and broken heart. What blessings have you missed out in your life? Charles Spurgeon said this, and I, I like this quote. You cannot have back your time. I understand that. I can't get time back. But there is a strange and wonderful way in which God can give back to you the wasted blessings. The unripened fruits of years over which you mourned. And he goes on to say, it is a pity that they should have been locusts eaten by your folly and negligence, but if they've been so, be not hopeless concerning them. God can bless us. We can't get time back. God can bless us immeasurably. But we have to have a repentant heart. We have to have a humble heart. A sincere and broken heart before God. Now, why will God do this for deserving people? So that they will praise his name and never again be shamed before the heathen. If the people are crying out who their God is and they're being blessed and all these great things are happening and God's taking care of them and they're worshiping him, everyone's looking around and saying, well, who is their God? We don't have that in our land. When Christians live for God and God blesses them and they proclaim and give him praise and everything, everybody starts looking at them saying, hey, how, what do you got in your life I ain't got? How come all this is happening to you and I ain't got it? They'll start questioning. But if we Christians don't praise God and don't share and don't show and give him the glory, people are looking at us like, they're not enough for me. Why do I be Christian? They is just like me. See, we have to be different. The more you try to fit in, the more you fail God. The more you try to hide in the crowds, the more you let God down. The more that you deny your blessings. I said deny. For when you're not doing the will of God, you're not going to receive the blessings for doing his will. So you deny and say, I don't want your blessings, Lord, when you fail to do his will. You push them away. When we give God the praise, when we give God the glory, and people look at us and say, they're having the same problems I am, but they're awful happy about it. They're awful joyful about it. Man, they don't seem to be letting it bring them down. How come I'm so depressed and they're not and we have the same problems? And the difference is God. And we got to show that in our lives. We can't hide it. We got to show it. And that's what it's talking about. Why will God do it? So that they will praise his name, never again to be shamed. You, then you will know that I am in Israel, and I am your Lord, your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. That's what it talks about. And then it goes on. It says, never before our lands need healing. Israel's need healing. They're, they're, not, a, they're not fully to God yet, right? 
But what about us? What about our nation? Does our land need healing? Does our nation need healing? It's a resounding yes in my book. Oh, you can always look and find things, but never before in this nation do we have I seen such need. And I know I'm just a young man. There's been worse times, there's bad times, and maybe, you know, depression and what. But in this, one of the things that keeps coming to mind, the shedding of innocent blood. We mentioned this in previous sermons. When we shed innocent blood upon the land, the land cries out. The land cries out to God. Second Chronicles 7.14, a familiar verse. We've all heard this verse. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And will forgive their sin and will heal their lands. I pray that we continue to pray for this law to be changed. That we will stop abortion in America. And we can say, Lord, we stopped it. Or should we say, Lord, you stopped it as we prayed for it to stop. We give you the glory to bring this innocent killing to an end. We give you the glory and we give you the praise for stopping it, Lord. I pray we can give him his praise. And I pray that is the beginning of healing in our nation. As we remove one of the most hideous sins that has plagued our nation for years. We, our churches are under attack. Our churches are falling to the enemy because we're not getting sincere enough. We're not calling out to the God. We're not blowing the trumpet saying we are under attack. We're letting the enemy in. They're coming through the windows like thieves. And we're not warning anybody. Let us call ourselves to God. Let us rent our hearts and on our clothing. Let us fall before him humbly, repentant of our sins, broken hearted, and Lord calling out to him to save us. Saying, Lord, do not embarrass yourself. Bring glory to your name. Don't let the enemy say, where is your church? What has happened to your chosen? that are supposed to bring the redemption to the world about Jesus. Where are those who are going to be the light to the world? Where is your light, Lord? That's what they're going to say. We have snuffed out the light. And the enemy is snuffing the light out in a lot of places. And until we get serious about restoring the light, by breaking our hearts open to God, it's going to continue to get darker. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. Father, we give you the glory. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive our nation of its sins. And Father, we give to you our hearts. May we be humble before you. May we lay them rent open to you, Lord, that we'll receive you. And that we'll remorse over our sins and confess them before you. And may we change our ways to follow you, Lord, that we may be light in a world of darkness. Bless us and keep us, bring us back together again. For it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless and have a good night.